Hi everybody, welcome back again. So, now we're going to continue working with Unit 5, okay? Remember, what a story. And for us to continue on this next exercise, it's imperative that you have read the text uh, before in your study guide, okay? Otherwise, this exercise here won't make any sense to you right so i want us to take a look into this part here of train to think so thinking about different writing styles and here we have a definition writers use different techniques to bring their texts alive and before we go on to the questions we have down there uh, probably you have already noticed by reading different texts that authors, each one of them, have different ways of telling this, their stories. Even if, even if you don't read that much, but you all, uh, watch lots of different movies and videos on the internet and so on, you can identify uh, very big differences when we see one story or another story, okay? For example, sometimes movies, some movies, they start with a scene uh, that happens at the end of the story. And then later we go back to the beginning of the story. Sometimes we have movies that tell to that tell stories in different times and usually at the end the times of the story they meet so we understand the relationship between past events and the future events that we have already seen this also happens to written texts right so when writers they want to tell us a story they use different techniques to bring their texts alive, so to give us this idea of the context, what we should be thinking along with the topics that the, bring, the text brings, you know, so lots of different styles uh, rise here when we talk about this, okay? So, for us, let's check just the first one here okay so we have the first question saying what technique does the writer use in the title of the article okay so let's move to the article and check over over here so the title says everybody loves stories but why can you identify a technique that he uses, he or she uses in this title. Can you? Well, this very last part here, this but why, which is a question, it's actually called a rhetorical question. Hmm, difficult word, okay? But the concept of a rhetorical question is not that difficult. And that's what we're going to be talking a little bit later, okay? So, coming back to the questions over here, we have, what technique does the writer use in the title of the, title of the article? Well, <clears throat> he uses a question, right? Now, it's over to you, because we are going to analyze the, this style uh, that the, the author uses throughout the text, okay? So questions number two and three are over to you. So let's check that. Two, how many times does, does he use this technique in the article? And three, why do you think he does this, okay? So what I want you to do, I want you to pause this video now, Go back to your text in the study guide and try to identify how many times he uses this technique, this rhetorical questions, okay? Uh, one time only, does 
more uh, does it appear more than five times okay so we are really looking for a number here okay so how many times and later i really want you to try to think why do you think he does this okay so why does he use this rhetorical uh, rhetorical questions to talk about this oh and i have something very important to say before on the other video i was talking about the thrillers remember and i give you a wrong name of the movie i watch it i told you the movie was called run no it's not called run the name of the movie uh, i was referring to was get out okay so it's just uh, a correction i wanted to make so again pause the video here and try to answer questions two and three from this exercise here then come back here for us to check okay so could you find how many times he uses this technique five times right he uses this five times throughout the texts the text only one text here and now the most important question actually why do you think he does this okay well usually these rhetorical questions they are used to give us uh, or to create in the reader interest it's a thing of curiosity right when an author uses rhetorical questions he or she is asking us to think to imagine things before we get to the real information the author is trying to give us okay and usually this is very effective because then we as readers we really try to answer the question even though we don't know the answer we want to answer just like in the text uh, in the title of the text the title is everybody loves stories but why and then we start thinking why why do people love stories why do i like stories and love stories and then we try to answer this question so this creates a bond a connection with the text all right so these are possible answers of why he does this okay now we're going to move to the next part here where we have to choose the correct option so i'm going to do this exercise with you guys and then we have these two sentences that we need to choose the correct option so the first one is when people ask a, rhetor a rhetorical question they expect an answer or they don't really expect an answer what do you think let's go on to the next one then we come back two they ask a rhetorical question to introduce the subject they want to talk about or to find out what you are thinking hmm very interesting what do you think guys do you think that people ask a rhetorical question they expect an answer or they don't really uh, really expect an answer for example let's go back to the title of the text everybody loves stories but why do you think the author here is really expecting us to answer this question or do you think that he is just bringing this question so that we get like ah oh, this is interesting i want to answer but maybe i don't have the correct answer or the best answer okay so i would say that when people ask a rhetorical question they don't really expect an answer they want us to be interested in what they have to say and then they ask a rhetorical question to introduce the subject or to find out what you were thinking for example think about the logical of reading a text imagine you're reading a book from the 1900s 
you know, like a person who is, uh, the author is already dead. Do you think the author is interested in finding out what you're thinking? Probably not. So the usage of rhetorical questions is close, closely related to introducing a subject the authors want to talk about. Do you agree with me? Do you think it's a different thing? If you don't agree with me, that's not a problem. You can even send a message to your teacher saying why you don't agree with me. And let's see how you have your mind shaken by the answer from your teacher, okay? So, let's check our answers. Well done, guys. So, we see here, when we use a rhetorical question, we don't, ex don't really expect an answer. And we usually use them to introduce a subject we want to talk about. Okay? Good. So, coming back here, let's see what we have. Oh, yeah. Now, I have a challenge for you. Because here we have paragraphs 4 and 5 from the text on your study guide don't contain any rhetorical questions. Think of a rhetorical question that you could add to each paragraph. So, this is the challenge for you. You are going to go back to paragraphs 4 and 5 in the text. So, here. So, paragraph 4 here and 5 here. Okay, so in this last column. And you are going to try to come up with a rhetorical question that you could, that, that would fit into these paragraphs, okay? So, remember that here we don't have like one question, one possible answer for this. So, you have to think of the rhetorical question, so at least two rhetorical questions, and you can send them to your teacher so that he or she can tell you that the rhetorical question works or if it, they don't, do not work. Okay? So, the challenge is out there. It's all on you now, guys. So, I think that's it for now. And we'll come back later to talk a little bit about the grammar topics of this unit. Okay? Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.